Thank you. Um, welcome to the Planning Applications Committee. Um, can I take apologies for absence? I don't believe there are any people absent, so I think that's quite clear. Declarations of pecuniary interest, are there any? If you could just shake your head. Thank you. Minutes of the previous meeting, can we agree those, please? Thank you. Um, we're moving to the first item on the agenda, which is to Church Lane. Um, this evening, because the public are not present, their submissions have been uh, given to us in writing. And uh, so objectors and applicants will have their views expressed um, by an officer um, prior, uh, prior to a members discussing. Um, obviously, with our next meeting, the public will be uh, uh, taking part. Um, so we're moving on to agenda item five, which is to Church Lane. Presentation, please, Jonathan. Uh, can I first uh, draw uh, members' attention to the supplementary agenda? Um, you'll see on that that there's um, there have been some minor amendments to the drawings, um, and then there's a table which relates to amenity space, um, which has been updated. Um, that now in ensures that all the units um, are both compliant with adopted policy for both internal and um, external uh, amenity space. You also see there's um, an additional condition uh, that's been uh, added uh, as well regarding um, noise rest restrictions on any plant um, and uh, equipment. Right, if you'll bear with me a second, I'm just going to have a go at sharing my screen with you. Right. If you will be fairly um, patient uh, with me on this, um, my monitor's decided that it's going to display everything in landscape form rather than portrait form. Um, but if I can just take you through um, some of the uh, images that we've got here. Um, the proposal um, is to uh, demolish um, uh, the existing form of surgery on Church Lane um, and erect a building comprising uh, eight flats uh, arranged uh, on three floors with the top floor uh, within uh, the roof. Um, if I can direct members to um, looking at uh, the officer's uh, report, um, you'll see that the application, uh, sorry, the application site um, has been uh, the subject of um, considerable planning history in recent years, uh, with a number of schemes being refused and with appeals being dismissed. Uh, the scheme before you this evening um, has been the subject of uh, considerable uh, discussion um, between planning officers and the applicant. And the scheme before members this evening represents a further scaling back of proposals to those as uh, originally submitted. I'll just uh, take you to some of the images of the, the proposed building. If there's a slight delay um, in terms of the image coming up, I think that's just uh, quite a large file size and uh, the computer's taking a while to, to take that on board. And that's the, uh, that's the front elevation of the proposed um, building. Um, like I said, objections are summarized on page 15 of the agenda paper. Um, and cover matters including overdevelopment, scale, bulk, impact on neighbour amenity, servicing and parking. Uh, the conservation officer is engaged in discussions with planning officers and the applicant as the scheme has evolved and is supportive of the, of the scheme as amended. Uh, the report on the uh, agenda papers provides a detailed examination of the character of this part of the conservation area. Uh, the contribution or otherwise of the existing building and neighbouring buildings uh, the report goes on to examine changes to the current application, impacts on neighbouring properties, and assesses the quality of accommodation and parking, access and servicing matters. Overall, it's considered that the scheme has addressed earlier concerns, would deliver a good quality design that would blend in well with the area, would provide accommodation that meets adopted internal and external space standards, and would have adequate parking and servicing arrangements. The application is recommended for approval subject to the completion of the Section 106 Agreement to restrict parking permits and conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Are those drawings going to be removed? 
don't mind. Yeah, I'm quite happy. I, I to think so. But then I can see. I can see the absolutely. Committee. Thank you very much. Okay, Louise. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to read a statement on behalf of um, Ian and Amy Lee from 85 Church Lane. As owners of 85 Church Lane, two church lanes immediate next door neighbour, we believe that the proposed development raises serious privacy concerns, particularly for ourselves, 14 Langley Road and Andridge Court. The planning officer's report said, paragraph 7.21, that there are no windows on the rear elevation of number 85. This is incorrect. The report fails to mention that our son's bedroom has a Velux window, which is the sole source of light for that bedroom and would be overlooked by the first two floor windows. The bedroom would also be impacted in terms of light and outlook. The applicant incorrectly identifies the bedroom as a non-habitable room. It is a habitable room by the technical housing standards and acknowledged as such by the planning inspector in his report, having conducted a site visit in 2016. The overlooking into our son's bedroom was identified by the planning inspector as a serious issue. The current proposal includes obscured lower panes only, which does not deal with the privacy concerns as overlooking is still possible from upper panes and also when the windows are opened. The planning officer report omits to even consider this serious privacy concern. The planning inspectorate also visited number 14 and concluded that the close proximity, height and bulk of the proposed three-storey building would be over dominant and unneighbourly when seen from number 14 and significantly reduce the outlook from and light received by a ground floor habitable room, a bedroom. The latest proposal appears to involve a small reduction in the size of the building and privacy for number 14 only secured by a frosted glass panel. The planning report states that the proposed building represents only a 0.9 metre height increase. It is hard to understand how such a small increase will allow for an additional storey of two two bedroom flats. It is also unclear where the information had come from as there is no information on existing building height or proposed height increase in the application or amended plans. For Andrews Court, the proposed development will deprive the elderly residents of the amenity of the grounds by the blocking of sunlight and the intrusion of privacy due to overlooking. Despite the minor improvements made by the applicant over the years, given the number of unresolved privacy and outlook issues, on what basis did the planning officer conclude that the application should be granted and how can the conclusion be justified? Thank you. Does the agent, um, is there an agent's response to that? There is. Um, I, I, actually, no, Chair, I've got, um, I've got a, a, a further objector. I've got okay. um, Dr. Alison Campbell. Okay. Um, as owners of 14 Langley Road, the immediate neighbour at the back of Two Church Lane, we believe there are a number of important and unresolved issues in relation to the proposed development, which have not been dealt with by the planning officer's report. We do not understand how the planning officer, who, unlike the planning inspector, did not even visit the immediate neighbours' homes, could possibly conclude that she does not consider the latest proposal to have a harmful impact on the neighbouring homes. Did she take into account the planning inspector's damning report? The application had already been rejected several times, including on appeal. With no significant changes made to the current proposal, on what basis did the planning officer conclude that the application should be granted? The living condition on, of the, the immediate neighbours would be adversely affected by A, the domination of a three-storey high building that would cause privacy breaches and block out views of the sky and light. B, potential intrusive noise from eight flats. C, the proximity of refuse bins, which no one will have responsibility for keeping clean, the entrance of which is adjacent to the dining room window of 85 Church Lane, and D, the unreasonable and obstructive vehicular access of Andridge Court that the overdevelopment of such a small site would require. Additionally, we understand that there will be eight air source heat pumps outside the flats, one in very close proximity to the living room window of number 85. We have no information about the potential noise impact of these heat pumps and understand that no assessment of the collective noise level has ever been considered. 
We also have no faith in the developer's commitment to caring for local trees. He has already destroyed the holly hedge between number 85 and his property, except for the hedge at the front of number 85, erroneously referred to in the report as belonging to the applicant, para 7.17. The location of the refuse store next to this remaining holly hedge will almost certainly result in damage to the hedge as industrial size wheelie bins are dragged along the boundary each week. The silver birch belongs to Andridge Court and the Turkish hazels in the streets to the community. He should not be permitted to carry out tree works on them solely to gain access in order to overdevelop over a small site. The principal problem with the developer's proposal is that it is trying to squeeze too much into the depth and height of the available space. A two-storey block with fewer flats and more room for less intrusive amenity spaces would address the issue of privacy and lack of light and be more acceptable to the immediate neighbours and the local community. Thank you. And the um, representation on behalf of the applicant. Dear members, this planning application is the culmination of considerable time and effort, both by the applicant and the council, to achieve a high quality development for the application site. In particular, we would like to thank Katerina Chung and Jonathan Lewis, as well as the conservation officer, Jill Tyndale, for their constructive input in seeking amendments to the initially submitted drawings, which itself followed lengthy pre-application discussions and development of the scheme through 2019. The report to committee provides a comprehensive assessment of the application and in addition to that this planning application was submitted with extensive and detailed information from a bespoke landscaping scheme to a specially commissioned heritage assessment. The applicant would however like to highlight the following key elements. The scheme would deliver a significant enhancement to the conservation area through the removal of a poor quality building that currently detracts from it and its replacement with a building that reflects the quarter main style and is befitting of the conservation area's special characteristics. It would provide a net additional eight residential units with a good mix of unit sizes that would all meet or exceed the relevant space standards. One of the flats is very marginally short by half a square metre on amenity space. This is, as you can see from the report before you, considered to be acceptable, but we have provided amended plans that show a slightly enlarged balcony to this flat. The development would ensure that there are no harmful effects arising in any other respect. We are aware that some concerns have been raised and we have worked hard to address these, as you will see from the report before you. This includes avoiding overlooking and, as shown on the submitted plans, ensuring the line of sight from neighbouring residential properties windows is not impacted. Robust information has been provided in technical reports on trees and car parking and further fine tuning has taken place on design detailing and material selection. To summarise, therefore, this site provides the ideal opportunity to bring about a development that is not only sensitive to the area, but has the potential to lift it, given the current building that occupies the site and the neutral quality buildings around it. We look forward to you supporting the recommendation this evening and granting approval subject to the Section 106 agreement. Thank you very much. Um, Jonathan, do you have anything you wish to respond back to? Um, Chair, um, I mean, I could I could go through the um, drawings in response to some of the queries that have been that have been raised, um, if if that might help. I think so. Yeah. Please. Okay. Um, if we go to, um, sorry, if I can take you to some of the floor plans. Okay, so if we look at the um, ground floor um, uh, plan, we've got um, in terms of screening between the two prop between um, uh, the uh, first objectors um, concerns and uh, the property, we've got um, a boundary wall fence um, here, and then mainly uh, a blank wall, um, and then doors open opening towards um, uh, a fence um, there. So no real concerns in terms of um, uh, impact uh, on uh, neighbour amenity. Um, if we go up to the um, first floor, 
Uh, it's perhaps a little hard to see um, on the image, um, but the um, kitchen window where I'm circling the cursor here and the um, living room window where I'm circling the cursor there, uh, the, the, the applicant's correct. You know, they, they have um, uh, put in um, obscured glazing up to um, uh, about three quarters of uh, the height um, of uh, those windows which is commonplace to ensure that um, you don't um, give rise to overlooking. Um, in terms of the kitchen, um, if members still felt that that was um, unenabled in terms of overlooking downwards towards um, uh, the bedroom, if it was a kitchen, it wouldn't be entirely unreasonable to um, uh, request that um, that be um, completely obscure glazed. Um, it might be a little disappointing if you were to do the same on the living dining room um, area, but what you can see from the um, plans is that it's a dual aspect room. Um, and so in, in, in that respect, um, you know, there would be a perfectly good and adequate um, outlook um, uh, to the rear. There were some concerns raised uh, as well about privacy towards um, Andridge um, Court, but you, you can see from, if, uh, you can see the the um, uh, the cursor moving up and down the image um, uh, here. You'll see that the orientation of the two properties is such that um, a, a lot of Andridge Court runs at right angles to the rear elevation um, of uh, Church Lane, and to that end, you wouldn't have so much direct um, overlooking. You may have um, some oblique um, overlooking, but the officer's report tackles that in terms of the separation distances, which I think are cited as being something in the order of 13 and 14 um, metres. Um, uh, and again, uh, you know, it, it, it's a matter of judgment as to whether or not where you have that um, uh, oblique um, uh, overlooking relationship, if that's something which is so harmful um, as to warrant um, refusal. Um, if I can just move on to the orientation of the, of the site. Um, uh, the orientation is such that um, the uh, majority um, of um, uh, shadows um, during um, uh, uh, midday would um, drift um, towards, sorry, where's my, here we go, would be in this direction. So you can see the sun path here, rising the east, setting in the west. So the shadows would be going this way um, uh, uh, across um, the site. So again, um, a matter of judgment, perhaps not such a, uh, uh, an issue to, to warrant um, refusal. The um, elevations are such, you can see here, they've dotted on some lines showing the, um, uh, the windows and uh, the line of sight towards uh, the building. Uh, I think where you've got windows which are, are very close to a site boundary, um, you know, it, you're really frustrating the, the meaningful development of that site if you're looking to try and provide uninterrupted light to those windows. Um, so, you, you know, you, you have got windows really close to the boundary um, uh, uh, here, um, but I think it would be unreasonable um, to say that a, a two-storey building um, with accommodation in the roof couldn't go um, on the site. And again, from the skylight um, in uh, the first floor room here, um, again, uh, I, would, I would suggest that you've got perfectly good um, light penetration into um, uh, that room. Um, I think there were concerns more generally about overdevelopment, but uh, again, officers have taken a view that um, in this instance, the scheme um, is acceptable. Um, if I can just move the the cursor around it. This was the area where the plans originally had sort of a, a, a feature at second floor level, a much more bold feature um, there, which officers felt was unduly bulky. Um, and that's been scaled back. And we've now got this um, uh, arrangement of um, tile hung uh, gable ends. Um, in terms of heights, it's 5.25 to the eaves and 8.78 metres to um, the ridge. So um, if 
5.25 to the ease, you know, you're looking at some around about 2.6 meters per floor, um, um, which is perfectly um, reasonable, giving a, like I said, if you take the, the third floor as well, what, what's being proposed is what you might expect for a, a building on two floors with a third floor in the roof. Thank you. Thank you. Can you, yeah, thank you. I was going to say, could you remove the, the, the drawings? Um, uh, so questions, please. Can you show your hands if you wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Lanning. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a question with reference to uh, the refuse store on page 21. Um, so it mentions that one of the reasons that the previous schemes were dismissed at appeal was due to the harmful impact on the conservation area of the positioning of the refuse bin store at the front of the site. But then moving to the current application on page 26, it suggests that the bin store would still be at the front of the site. And I just wondered whether officers could comment on that. Thank you. Chair, um, uh, can I, can, sorry, I've lost, I've lost people. Can, let me just share the screen again. If I can just go to the image showing the ground floor. Yeah, for, for a, a, a development um, uh, like this, we've got um, uh, cycle parking um, here. We've tried to tuck um, uh, the refuse uh, around um, uh, here. Um, I, I think um, the applicant's trying to um, uh, meet various um, challenges um, here, um, not least of which is um, you know, the increasing demand to provide um, cycle parking um, and uh, the need to provide um, adequate refuse um, uh, uh, arrangements. Um, uh, as well. Um, I don't think this is something on which, um, you know, there's any hard and fast rule and really it's something where again, I, I think you know, it's, it's without wanting to duck um, uh, uh, an answer, it's really over to members to decide whether or not they feel that because of the number of units, it's giving rise to other associated concerns, but uh, officers are, are comfortable with, with the current arrangements. Thank you. Councillor Southgate. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I have three points I'd like to raise which relate to uh, representations we, we received in the week. Uh, so I'll just list them briefly. From first flat 23 in Ambridge Court, and just uh, for clarification there as to whether um, the photograph we saw, in, in fact, is from a, a habitable room, and there also seems to be dispute as to whether it's obscure glazed or not. Secondly, uh, some of the points raised by Ian and Amy Lee, uh, particularly concerning their son's bedroom. And the third area is the uh, air source heat pumps, which we now do have an additional condition which wasn't there before, but I still one or two questions to make sure I understand that. So can I ask first about um, flat 23 in Andridge Court? And I think this is very, very simply the report says that both windows are obscure glazed and we received a photograph suggesting that one wasn't. Okay, um, again, if I, if I can share the, um, the images with you. So if I work my way up through um, uh, the building, uh, we've got the first floor, uh, again, perfectly um, reasonable to um, attach a condition requiring um, all, uh, most if not all of that window to be obscured glazed, um, so as to avoid overlooking because you've got the dual aspect of the room um, here. Perfectly reasonable to put um, a privacy screen uh, along the little inset balcony um, here. 
again, reasonable, although perhaps not the kind of thing that we necessarily want to um, encourage all the time, but if it's an issue, it would be reasonable to attach a condition saying uh, obscure glazing up to 1.7 meters and the lower parts of the windows to be designed to be fixed um, shut. Uh, here, we've got another um, a window, but it serves a dual aspect uh, room. So again, reasonable to um, condition that to say that window should be obscured glazed. Um, and again, for any um, uh, outside area um, here, um, it would um, be um, uh, reasonable if there were concerns to um, require um, uh, a privacy screen um, up to 1.6 or 1.7 meters um, high around um, any part of the, uh, the flat um, uh, roof. If I can just move on to the next image. Um, again, we've got um, windows that are uh, a higher uh, level here. So uh, we've got uh, a window facing towards the side uh, of this um, building. Uh, but we've got a window looking forwards. So again, you could have a clear window um, here and some degree uh, of obscuring um, there. Not ideal, but it might be unreasonable to um, require um, some uh, obscuring there. And then you've got a rear facing window um, here. So reasonable to put privacy screens um, here. So. I think as you work your way up through the building, looking towards Andridge um, Court, um, each of the windows presents a challenge, but each of the windows does present an opportunity to attach um, proper um, planning conditions to overcome uh, concerns. Working down through the building, um, as I've said, the, there, are, there are similar approaches that can be taken with the windows on on that side of the building uh, where you've got um, the skylight window um, to uh, the bedroom. Councillor Southgate, uh, sorry Chair, um, I think Councillor Southgate's other question related to the um, air source heat pumps. Um, yeah, but, but also one or two points in relation to the um, relationship with number 85. Um, Right, so that's uh, the relationship in terms of um uh impact on privacy the um am i muted no you're not no okay <laughs> um it's really which overlooks which that there seems to be some misunderstanding uh which partly relates to the the height of the building so i have looked at it actually um okay as to whether uh, the, the the development will look down on and into the son's bedroom. Yes. And in fact, when I, when I check this out, I find that the the height of the existing building is seven point eight eight meters. So uh, the the differential is crept at zero point nine meters. So I think yes. the um, the perception that the old surgery is being replaced by a much larger and higher building is in fact not you know, not entirely correct so that would deal with that aspect but um chair if, if i can just take the curse uh, sorry the um mm. uh, the mouse across the image um uh, here you'll see that I, i've placed the um the curse of roughly where the head uh, of uh, the first floor windows will be and if we take a take a line straight across to um uh, uh yeah the, yeah the roof slope, you'll see that that's 
lower, low, slightly lower than the windows in in, in that room. We've we've got the um, uh, the skylight shown roughly here. Um, I mean, you know, the, the two windows will be in will be in close um, uh, proximity, um, but on the basis of the images before us, I, I, I would suggest that you're almost sort of look, sl looking slightly upwards towards that um, that window. Um, I mean, it, you know, officers ha have 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 considered the concerns which have been raised by um, uh, uh, neighbours on on this um, uh, scheme. Um, but as with so many applications, we have to exercise a degree of judgment. And um, I, I don't think we would have placed a report before members um, if we hadn't felt comfortable, at least, that the proposals were reasonably supportable. Okay, can I, and just to check, you mentioned um, some obscure glazing up to a certain height, is that what, 1.7 meters or? Chair, the, the, the um, general permitted development order um, normally uses 1.7 meters above internal finished floor level um, as uh, a benchmark. Um, and if members felt that um, certain windows needed to be uh, uh, obscured um, in terms of the glazing, then that would form the basis of um, any condition that officers would attach um, in the event that permission was granted. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Councillor Making. Um, I've, got, I've got two questions. Um, one is, is the air source heat pumps part of the amenity space and has that number been taken into account on the table that's paid on the modifications? And uh, the second question was to, to do with the trees and the stuff that the, that the uh, objector said. Could you comment on those? Um, Chair, um Sorry, the um, uh, the amenity space, um, which is um, uh, being um, provided, is primarily in the form of little courtyard gardens. Um, sorry, and wouldn't be um, reduced um, as uh, a result. Um, of, um, here we go. So we've got the ground floor, so uh, a space here, modest little courtyard here, another small courtyard here, um, and then working um, our way up through the building, you've got um, uh, little balconies. Um, so no, um, that, that, wouldn't be, um, that wouldn't be harmed. Um, I'm afraid I, I, I'm not aware as to whether or not the applicant uh, has um, in, in the past carried out any works um, that may have damaged um, uh, trees. Um, the, the proposals um, had um, previously um, included, um, uh, I think, more parking spaces. So, you know, we, we are looking at something where we try to retain a, a degree of greenery um, uh, across um, part of the, um, uh, the frontage uh, of the site. Um, and um, by using um, the existing um, crossover, um, the existing trees should be capable of being retained. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Councillor Dean. Councillor Dean, can you uh, <laughs> unmute Councillor Dean, please? Hello. Um, just a um, straightforward question. At the back, where it looks like car parking spaces, what is that? Is that the amenity space? Yeah. What, what is that? Sorry, Chair. Um, the, um, if I can just, uh, again, uh, go to the, uh, the, the images. The, um, uh, 
The space at the rear, this is, um, uh, this is space associated with the, uh, the Andridge Court um, uh, development. So uh, that's, if I can just, if we go back to the, can you see uh, the, the image that I'm circling here? Right. That's, our, that's our application site. Okay. So you've got Andridge Court here, a driveway there, and then parking. So that's that's their that's space. Good. That's our, okay, okay. And and one last question, Chair. Um, when the uh, looking at the appeal, um, I couldn't really see much difference between the appeal and and, and the new application. Could you just pinpoint what you saw as different between the two? Chair, um, sorry, um, the uh, the latest scheme is for um, eight flats. Uh, the previous scheme was for um, nine flats. Um, the proposals um, previously um, didn't meet um, adopted um, uh, floor space um, standards. The latest scheme does meet those standards. Um, uh, the, the proposals have addressed the concerns regarding the provision of cycle parking, but officers acknowledge that the presence of the cycle parking, um, given the layout, would involve a structure towards the front of the, the building. So that's the that's a sort of the, the on balance um, aspect. So you know, I, I think there are differences. Now, as, as I've said, the way the schemes evolved, um, the, the, the proposals initially had a much bigger um, presence um, as you looked at the building on the um, uh, the right hand side um, with a very bold um, sort of um, mock Tudor detailed um, uh, gable um, fronted um, uh, wing to uh, the building and you know officers said sorry we, we, we just couldn't support that the, the building was just far too big and I feel that the changes that we've negotiated during the course of discussions on this application of scale building down a little bit further um, so um, hopefully that, that, that covers those, those. So could I just ask, I got the impression that uh, the discussion about visual intrusion, loss of privacy and overlooking was about as you looked at the building to the left. And um, I just wasn't clear on if the left hand side had changed in height and massing at all. Yeah, sorry, I'm moving my cursor around as if I'm trying to find the button on the on the lectern to uh, to press. Um, the um, uh, unfortunately, what I don't have are drawings showing um, the earlier um, uh, proposals, um, and I'm not sure um, this evening that I've got the ability to to draw those up um, and show you, um, but. Um, the concerns uh, in terms of overlooking have, have, have been in pretty much in both directions and we feel that at the moment we've got a workable solution. Okay, Councillor Najeeb, um, we've got six minutes before um, we're going to, well four minutes actually, before we break for the uh, clapping for the NHS. So would you like to put your question in and we'll see whether we can accommodate anybody else before that. Yeah. Thank you Chair, so a very quick question on page 28. Uh, clause 9, the construction hours are 8 uh, a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. However, the government said that construction can go from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday to Saturday. So is this something you're going to change the conditions or are, are you going to impose 8 to 6? Chair, um, I'm aware that um, this um, initiative um, has been mooted um, by um, the housing uh, minister, um, but 
as planners, I think we have to um, stick to the rule of looking at um, each case um, on its merits. Um, and while uh, the um, redevelopment of perhaps a large um, edge of provincial town um, housing development, or perhaps uh, a large um, inner city um, development, such as what you might find around Nine Elms, um, might be permitted to continue um, with construction work until um, uh, nine. Um, those circumstances are going to be um, different compared to the very domestic scale and um, almost village-like environment of uh, the Merton Park Conservation Area. And I think we have to exercise our own judgment in cases like this and say, well, we feel that in this instance, it's not appropriate um, to um, follow um, that approach. I, I think it has to be looking at each case um, and its circumstances. Thank you. Well, we've got four minutes. I'm, if we can, if there are any more questions, are there any more questions? I suggest um, uh, perhaps we take the break now because um, when we come back, we'll, we'll go into uh, comments. Okay, please don't switch your screens off. No. Um, because if you do, we'll have to start all over again. So we'll we'll be back here at um, five past eight. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay, I think we can resume. Um, so we've, uh, I don't know, we have any more further questions. We move on to comments, please. Uh, Councillor Southgate. Thank you, Chair. Um, it, it's, I think it's a pretty good scheme overall. It's really just a, a couple of rather finicky parts. One, one is to do with the refuse um, storage, which uh, there have been objections from number 85. I think more of that, as far as I can see, all those refuse bins are right by the outside the bedroom window of flat number three. Is that, that right? Um, which doesn't seem ideal. But the, the other, I just have a concern about what happens if the air source heat pumps don't work. I notice our climate change officer has recommended that they be upgraded to an output of uh, 3.0 rather than 2.6. And if that's not achievable within a uh, tolerable level of, of decibels, what, um, I, I guess my question is, you know, what happens if if the, the the proposed heat source actually doesn't doesn't function as promised? Okay. Um, is is that a matter for each uh, flat owner to introduce, you know, or, or put alternative heating in, or or does it rest with the developer? So that, those those two points really that concern you. Okay. Mm. Um, Councillor Dean. Um, I think if there wasn't um, an appeal, uh, then I, I suppose I would view this the same way as Councillor Southgate. But uh, the inspector raised uh, a number of points which uh, the objectors have said haven't been dealt with. I think the difficult part for the landowner and the developer is that the building to the left and the building to the right don't face the street. They face uh, at 90 degrees, which means there is overlooking into habitable rooms. And I don't think uh, that the uh, initial application dealt with the fact uh, that the two buildings were at a 90 degree angle. And I certainly don't think this application has changed anything. Uh, it is a difficult site. I assume the value of the site is based on uh, the restrictions that it has. And um, I can't see how uh, you could have a three-story building next to one that's basically one and a half. It's one story and then a roof on one side and the other one where everybody's looking in. So um, I just think that um, the uh, appeal still stands. And the three issues, really, uh, on why it was refused um, uh, need to stand uh, in that uh, privacy uh, and overlooking uh, have not been dealt with. And uh, it's for the applicant to decide how, how they're going to manage that. But at the moment, uh, the current building is an odd shape because of uh, the issues it would have caused for its neighbours. Uh, and this one needs to uh, square that particular circle. So I would say that it should be rejected on that basis until they come back with something uh, sensible for the neighbours. Okay, Councillor Henry. Hi, good afternoon everyone again. Um, I had visited the site um, a few days ago and um, having seen what it is like now and what it will be like in the future with this building, I think it will make a great impact in developing the area. The other thing is, where I live, I live at the end of Terrace, and my house is opposite my neighbor's house or across from my neighbor's house. And, you know, obviously bedrooms are there, we can see each other, but of course we respect each other's privacy. And I hope, you know, people respect each other's privacy because no matter what you do in life, you're always something gonna obstruct someone. And if we keep, refusing on grounds of these things, I don't, I don't think, um, you know, we doing any good because almost everywhere you go, there's always something that one may not like, but of course we have to learn to understand that we have to respect each other by protecting ourselves and themselves. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Dean, did you want to move um, uh, a recommendation? Uh, I'd like to hear if uh, there are other opinions. I mean, if they are all one way, then I won't. Um, but uh, um, I mean, certainly, I don't think visual intrusion, loss of privacy, and overlooking has been changed, and I would reject okay. on that basis. Okay. All right. Uh, Councillor McGrath. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I walk past this site almost every day, and I think they've done a really good job of, of designing something that fits in pretty well. So I would like to certainly vote in favour of it. Um, and I just wanted to know whether we could add a condition about a swift box to the conditions, please. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ward. <clears throat> Uh, thank you. I just want to deal slightly with the overlooking issue. Um, Councillor Dean says that everybody will be looking in. It seems to me, looking at the drawings, that those two rooms um, on the left-hand side of the proposed new building, as we look at it, the kitchen and the sort of living dining area, um, it's possible that people could overlook into that window if they, for instance, stand on their kitchen countertops or push their living room table to the window and stand on it so, they're, so their head height is above 1.7 metres and then look obliquely upwards, slightly upwards or at least horizontally to a Velux window. So they could, if they went to the effort to stand on their kitchen countertop, get a view of the ceiling of the bedroom opposite. It's, it's an entire red herring. Nobody is going to be sitting in their armchair in their flat and look, at, and look over and be able to look straight down into that bedroom. That's just not going to happen. It's an entire red herring. The distances between the two rooms, it, I mean, for, for that to be seemingly the main objection to this, and I deliberately um, held back from making any comments until we'd heard from South, Councillor Southgate, who um, represents the ward that this um, proposed development is in, and his um, minor quibbles, but general um, um, approval of this important development, delivering housing for the area, um, confirms what I was already thinking that um, we should pass this recommendation, uh, pass this, this application as it stands. And I would like to um, propose that we move to the vote um, straight away um, as, uh, on the recommendation to approve. Thank you. Well, I can, I can do that. Although we have asked, um, Councillor Dean, did you want to move a recommendation? Because I need to know if you have a seconder. Uh, no, is there a second? Is there well, a second? Sorry. Well, I would say, Chair, is that yeah. um, it wasn't um, what the objectors were saying, it was what the inspector was saying. Right, okay. Uh, and and that, to be clear, this is what the inspector said. But, okay. Uh, you carry on, Chair. Okay. Do you have a seconder? No. Okay. I'm going to move to the vote then. Can I just say that there's been a request for an additional uh, inclusion of a swift box, Johnson. Is that an issue? Is that a problem? I mean, that we, we can uh, um, that, find a relevant policy. Okay. To to. You've already added an additional condition into this, so the recommendation would include that additional condition you mentioned at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what we're doing then is voting on the recommendation to grant planning permission. Can I see those in favour, please? Please show with a hand. Okay. Those against, and those not voting. So, so I would say the recommendation is approved. Uh, we now move on to agenda item six, which is the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club um, application. Tim's presenting. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Bear with me a second. Okay. Hopefully that's worked, Chair. Has that worked? Yes, we can see. Oh, well, it's moved now, but we could see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, members, so the 
the application site is located on the east side of Somerset Road and forms part of the wider Allingham Tennis Club grounds. The site specifically relates to the entrance gate 20 and the associated area to the southeast, which is accessed by gate 16. This is a close up of the existing site plan. Um, so currently there's gate 16 here and gate 20 here. Uh, gate 16 provides access to what's currently the known as the broadcast yard where um, before the championships um, broadcast lorries would park and stay there for the duration of the championships. Um, gate 20 currently provides access to car parking further into the site but is also um, sort of known as a bit of a back, back of house area at the moment so um, during um, outside <laughs> of the championships planting um, an extra um, facilities are, are provided up here um, with various ancillary uh, structures here as well. This is a proposed floor plan. Um, it's a proposed ground floor plan, a proposed media building. Uh, the ground floor will comprise a number of small rooms which would be used really for interview rooms um, and the like with the media. The proposal would also adjoin and function with the existing broadcast centre which currently at ground floor level is in dark gray at the bottom and to the right hand side. And those existing broadcast center rooms currently overlook um, tennis courts, which are on lower level. Proposed site plan. So looking at, this is essentially first floor level for the proposed media pavilion building. Um, there'll be more internal rooms and circulation space and largely leading to a main new press conference center for the, the club. Um, the existing one is currently under the Millennium Building within within the basement. Um, this will be a provided a new one. Um, a technical services building is also proposed, um, which is there. Um, that provide um, extra IT support um, and also the facility for the Hawkeye uh, facility to go in there as well. That is replacing some existing cabins, which are also IT support but this would essentially be a permanent upgrade. Further to the north, so the proposal includes a repositioning of gate 20 further north by 15 metres and a new alignment of the internal access road. Um, a new area would be formed, which is here, and that would accommodate the broadcast media lorries, which used to park over here, would now park here during the championships. Uh, outside of the championships, um, this is essentially fenced off with access gates and this would become the storage area for tree and plant nursery. So outside of the championships, um, landscaping facilities are st would be stored here. Also three permanent security buildings are proposed. The largest in the far east part of the site here, one here, and another one, sorry, further over here. Um, the purpose of this is to allow um, the accreditation and security hut here would allow cars uh, to access the site fully up to here to allow for accreditation to take place. Currently it takes place here and can cause issues on the road with cars looking to come in. Also proposed is a first floor walkway linking the media building with the Millennium building as well. Turning to the proposed roof plan, um, the use of the highest section of the roof um, here on top of the essentially the the, med the press conference room would access would always would actually be a, also a flat roof uh, media presenting section as well where the media can can go. A lot, a lot of the ancillary um, outside space is already there um, for for current use. This is a proposed floor plan of the support building. Um, to the north, so really large is a set out um, for media people to come and use, use the desks um, and, and, um, um, and be based there. Some elevations, so this is the simple security building, so that's the larger one set within the site. Uh, there are some of these, you can see from existing photograph here, they're on, on site already, um, rather simplistic looking structures uh, rendered um, building. Turning to the main media um, building itself. Um, so looking at the 
view from the Somerset Road, which is at the bottom here. Um, so we're having brick at ground floor um, with cladding, terracotta cladding here, uh, along with a green aluminium flat roof. And as I said earlier about the flat top bit used for outdoor media presenting, that's at the very top there, you can see there. Um, the actual Somerset Road does rise up as you go left. What they're showing here is the road internal to the site, which goes to the underground road network below the below the wider site. Looking at the side elevations, you could call them. Um, so this one, as you as you come up Somerset Road to the right hand side, this would this is what you would see. There's the footbridge linking the Millennium Building. Turning to the from the other direction, um, so due to site levels, um, you can actually you could actually walk from here further north to, to, to gate 20 and not have to drop in levels so that slightly goes up. So as you come down Somerset Road, this largely single story appearance, and then you've got a drop here towards the tennis courts behind. Turning to the proposed technical support building, um, as I said, this is to replace some existing, uh, five existing cabins um, with a more permanent structure. It would be um, aluminium clad green, um, largely representing the, the, the green colors of the wider club. Um, majority of windows on the inside that would face the inside of the site. And then on the outside of the site here, uh, large green cladding with an overhang and some floor to level windows here. We've got existing and proposed street scenes. So existing street scenes are top, proposed is below. Um, so you can just see the outline of the proposed media building would be here. Then you have what's closest to the road is the support services building. And as you can see, gate 20 will be closed off and move further up uh, to accommodate that new access. Chair, as part of the scheme, um, significant land soft landscaping is proposed with this application. Um, significant tree planting and also new hedge planting along the west uh, northern side of the of the new access. Um, mature trees are to be retained. Um, this the area here is already largely um, hard standing itself and also additional planting here and also here as well to assist in helping screen the um, the new um, support building there. <laughs> Looking further into the site um, applicants provided just some sections. So as you go up north of the site, it does slope up leading towards the uh, Burley block of flats known as Burley House to the north. Um, so this provides a section here, proposed additional hedging along this part here. A couple of 3D visuals provided by the applicants in the application. So looking north on Somerset Road, um, gate 16 here. So that essentially is the media pavilion building you would see. You can just see the proposed support services building as well. And then from the other side coming down the hill, the new new entrance uh, repositioned access on the left of gate 20 with the support services building here and the media building in the background. Some site photographs members. So currently, um, so as I said, with the championships on, this area here where the proposed media building would be, um, you have uh, media lorries here, but also these um, slightly porter cabins, so they will all be removed. Porter cabin accommodation is replaced within the new media building itself. And as I said, these lorries remove further up to access by gate 20. The support services building will place these green buildings here. It doesn't come beyond this row, that road remains open. Looking further up, so that's gate 20 proposed to be closed and move further north. And there, as you can see, um, sort of a mishmash of temporary structures. Um, currently this area, the proposal in our opinion would, would clean up this area of the, of the site, make it more, more appealing and visually better. Looking the other way, um, Newstead Way, which is a Resley Road opposite the uh, media building site entrance. The pictures on the site. So as you can see, there's some existing uh, media lorries there parked up. That's so this is a site where the media building would be. 
those green cabins will be removed and replaced. Um, this is like pictures on the site looking up um, towards the northern bank. So as I said, the site does slope upwards. So the residential flats to the north are on are on higher ground, as you can see here. So uh, neighbouring properties there. Um, proposal does also move the um, the new access road closer, um, but significant planting is proposed. If I can turn members' attention now to the modification sheet. Um, you'll note in the officer report we have we've got a um, response now from our climate change officer, um, along with the additions to the climate change section within the report, um, and that's for members to note and note the additional conditions in the formative recommended. So overall, Chair, proposal will provide an enhanced facility for the Alling Club. The provision of the media building will be well sited within the site, will be sited over an area which has little visual merit to the surroundings currently. The reposition of gate 20 is considered acceptable in, high, in terms of highway safety, and along with soft landscaping proposed, will provide an enhanced appearance for this particular area of the site. Proposals are considered to be well accommodated on the site without causing harm to surrounding area or neighbouring amenities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can you remove the yep. screen? Thank you very much. Uh, Is it going? <laughs> uh, sorry, Chair. Ah, there we go. Okay, thank you Apologies. very much. Louise, do we have uh, any submissions? Uh, yes, Chair, I have a submission on behalf of the Newstead Way and Somerset Road Residents Association. Okay, thank <clears> you. The Newstead Way and Somerset Road Residents Association has no objection to the scheme, Gate 20 proposed. However, we asked the Planning Applications Committee to take into account in any consent this request by the neighbourhood adjacent to the AELTC site to consider and enact measures to deal with the local environmental impact of not only the proposed scheme, but also the continuing and significant enlargement of the applicant's facilities over time. Should this application proceed to consider the terms of any Section 106 obligation or similar agreement, we request these terms should take into account the pressing needs to deal effectively with the negative impact of the increasing scale and capacity of AELTC operations on the quality of the overall neighbourhood experience and the negative effect on the local infrastructure. The AELTC site is bounded on one side by Somerset Road, a significant extent of which is unadopted, formerly of private status, and associated residents are responsible for its maintenance and safety. Pedestrian and vehicular access related to AELTC operations, including vehicles belonging to construction contractors, media staff, employees, maintenance people, and of course the annual influx of thousands of spectators, freely use the unadopted sector of the Somerset Road. Over time, the volume of traffic and parking generated by AELTC activities has increased significantly to the point where it actively threatens the quality of our neighbourhood. This situation leads us to request that the Section 106 obligation or other agreement associated with any consent for this application includes a requirement for the AELTC to become responsible for road and pavement maintenance a significant extension of parking controls, insurance provision to indemnify residents and signage to inform users of the private status of that part of Somerset Road and an enforced 20 mile per hour speed limit. Thank you for considering this request. Thank you. Are there any objections? Uh, no, that, that, that was the only um, representation and I have a response on behalf of the applicant. Please. Good evening Chair, Councillors, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the AELTC I would like to thank you for this opportunity to make the following statement in support of our planning application which proposes important works to improve our media and broadcast facilities and to improve the access to, function of and visual attractiveness of our Gate 20 area off Somerset Road. 
and to acknowledge and respond to the concerns raised by the neighbours in the objections submitted to date. A key element of how this of a key element of this is how we upgrade our 20 year old broadcast facilities to both meet the ever evolving requirements of our broadcast and media partners for the next 20 years and reduce the impact that the current management of access to these facilities has on our local residents. The planning application covers three interconnected projects which will enable us to meet that challenge. These include a new media pavilion building as an extension to our existing broadcast centre and including a new main interview room. Proposals to reorganise and improve our operation around Gate 20 in order to improve access from Somerset Road. The area around the gate is currently used for storage and the corralling of broadcasting vehicles and cab cabins during the championships. In its place, year round, we will create a plant nursery with the ability to provide a dedicated area for broadcast vehicles during the championships period. A proposal to replace the temporary porter cabins by gate 16 with a purpose built technical services room to house our championships IT services, including Hawkeye. Before submission of this planning application, we undertook two public e exhibitions to present our proposals to the local community. The feedback received has been influential in enabling us to co-create and reshape the approach taken. And while we are aware that some concerns remain, I would like to respond specifically to the comments in the committee report. I can confirm that the proposals will not increase the amount of traffic using Gate 20. We expect to see a decrease in traffic brought about by the completion of the new underground car park in Somerset Road and a new contractor accreditation point at Gate 1 off Church Road and away from residents. The improved Gate 20 access point has been explicitly designed to reduce the likelihood of vehicles queuing on Somerset Road. We are strengthening and improving the landscaping and planting along the boundary with our neighbours. The new accreditation building proposed at Gate 20 will be used primarily during the championships and only by broadcasters and media and those parking in car park four. We have already submitted a construction management plan and will continue to develop this when a contractor is appointed. We are also committed to working with the council to agree an approach that reflects best working practices. We always seek to coordinate construction activity between all our projects on the site. We will liaise with our neighbours throughout the entire construction programme and our AELTC estates team will always be contactable to answer any questions. In conclusion, this application would not only enable us to deliver a cutting edge broadcast and media operation, it will deliver some significant improvements around Gate 20 for our neighbours. Thank you again for this opportunity to address you this evening, and I hope you are able to support these important proposals. Thank you. Um, uh, Tim, would you like to comment on the Section 106 request? Uh, yes, Chair. Um, so, um, so with the Section 106 agreement, it has to be um, directly related to the to the development um, to make it make it acceptable. Um, I think one of the key things with this application is it is a um, an application for a new media specific building um, and some works to alter an existing access way, but it's not going to increase. It's not going to be a direct increase in 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 traffic generation per se. It, it's it would move simply the the access from the lorry from one to a, to a different gate. Um, so in terms of road road maintenance. Um, I understand there is a, a, a pr private road section of, of, of Somerset Road to, to the north. Um, that, um, with regards to the maintenance of that, and that that would essentially be a matter that the council could not could not um, could not get involved with under Section One Agreement as it's a private road. Um, with regards to the to rem remainder of the road, um, as I said, it, with the proposal before us, um, although there is naturally there's naturally disruption with construction traffic, as as obviously there has been with the construction of the um, of the indoor courts on the opposite side. Mm. Um, it is posing it poses difficulties that we could we could um, impose um, uh, road ma maintenance um, issues with regards to this particular application itself. Um, 
we do have obviously um, the one that's screen recommended for the actual direct works itself, i.e. The, the new access and the double yellow lines. Um, but officers' of, uh, advice is that we could we could not impose a section one six screen with regards to the environmental impact per se, okay. uh, as proposed by the residents. Thank you, Thank you. Um, Councillor Najib. Um, you're going to be leaving in a few minutes. Do you want to say what you're going to say? Because I don't think you're going to be able to vote on this application anyway. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. I, I was actually involved uh, with some meetings between the residents uh, and the All England uh, before it came uh, to the planning officers. So with that, I don't think I can uh, vote. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Duke will be leaving uh, the meeting at uh, uh, quarter to nine. Will you be returning to it? Hopefully in about 15, 20 minutes after 15, that. 15, 20 yeah. minutes, okay. That's because of fasting, um, Ramadan fasting. Thank you. Questions, please. Do we have any questions? Councillor uh, Henry. Thank you, Chair. Um, regarding the car on car park, um, sorry, um, space for parking, I realised from um, your report that there may be less um, parking space. Are there any facility make um, for more parking space or where um, there will be any access for more parking? Looking at page 61, highways. So the proposed reduced the amount of car parks, um, car parking. Uh, Chair, so the in terms of car parking itself, um, it doesn't. Sorry, bear with me. Can you can you see my screen? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't um, essentially change the, the 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 setup in terms of car parking itself. Um, so. There is no formal car parking at the moment in this particular area. This this access road leads down to um, a large car park and other areas within the, the main grounds of the site, of the wider site. Um, but none, the proposal doesn't include any of those um, car parking areas down there. What the proposal does is it, it removes this, um, this yard here, mm -hmm. which is used for broadcast um, lorries during the championships and it replaces it replaces that with a media building and that area is replaced here in the new proposals so this would this this area is specifically designed to allow for those broadcast lorries to come and park here um, as opposed to parking here during the championships in terms of car, car parking itself is not is not impacted on this um, so a lot of the issues raised on 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 car parking and, and the use of the access road here, um, with the development progressing on the um, the indoor tennis court site, which is opposite further down the road, um, that that permission I think we could put it in the in the report here, but that permission does include I think around 300 underground uh, 300 car parking spaces, with a lot of them in in, in a large basement. Um, so that in it in itself, when that becomes operational, that will relieve some pressure on this access road as well down to the other car parks. Thank you. Can you remove that from the oh, screen, yeah. please? Sorry. Thanks very much. Thank um, any other questions? Uh, Councilor McGrath. Yeah, can I just check about the building hours? Because I, I may have just have misunderstood it, but in the... Um, on page 85 in the conditions, it says, uh, one of the condition, condition six, it says D11 construction time, but it doesn't actually say what they're proposed to be. Ah, oh, sorry, Chair, that is, um, so it's the standard construction times um, imposed on, on a permission. So it'll be, um, is it eight, eight to five, mo Monday to Friday and eight to one on Saturdays. Oh, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Then we move to comments, please. Any comments? No comments? Okay, we'll move to the recommendations then. Can I see those in favour of the recommendation, please? Um, any against? 
not voting, Councillor Ngu. Thank you, the recommendation is uh, approved. We now move on to agenda item seven, which is 28 Floriston Road. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll just bring up the... Um... Share screen. Uh, members, the application site is outlined here in red on north side of Lauriston Road. Um, it is within, it comprises a detached two storey dwelling house um, and it is within the Wimbledon West conservation area. Surroundings is residential. Here's an outline of aerial view. Um, this is the proposed uh, block plan. The proposal itself is to replace the existing dwelling on site with a new dwelling. Um, the new dwelling would um, would be essentially single storey accommodation throughout with a basement in the centre of the, of the building. Um, it has been designed to be in staggered um, single storey height um, as they're called pavilions within, within the officer's report. Um, lower one at the front, tallest one in the middle and it staggers back as you go back towards, through the site. Um, with vehicle parking proposed off Wilberforce Way here. Um, oh, the plan's gone a bit wide, but the, the, this is the proposed ground floor plan um, where you can see the, the proposed layout. Uh, so although occupying sort of full width of the, of the plot, um, it is a single story building that's being proposed here in a, in a, in a sort of contemporary design. Um, so this is the Lauriston Roads here, walkway entrance through here, front courtyard, uh, other courtyard here and a smaller one here. To the basement, so the basement is in the centre of the property here. Uh, roof plan. So what is proposed as well is solar panels on the roof. Um, they've been designed to sit behind the parapet walls. So the design of the building is such that these walls are all parapet walls, um, with the roof set down in, on the inside to limit their visibility. Proposed elevations. Um, it is a brick. Um, facing brick building with um, with large aluminium frame windows. Um, so it's a rather sort of simplistic looking building. Um, I do have some 3D visuals that the applicant submitted for consideration to assist. Um, so views from the side, as I said, the building staggers back as you go back throughout the site. Um, so the road, the main road side is here and as I said, the main taller section is there and as it staggers back throughout the site. Uh, some st street scene drawings. Um, so from Wilberforce Way, which is a small off-road, um, you have the building does come to the edge, but there is a there is a break here, which would have um, some post and rail fencing with um, hedging beyond and then the car parking here. This is the other side. This building here is actually a neighbour's um, outbuilding, and this is the main road here. So the view from the front, this is the front elevation here. Um, two metre high wall proposed at the front with access, pedestrian access. On my site photographs, there are some, some um, high walls of the street I can show you. And at the back here, uh, is looking rear from Wilberforce Way. Uh, just some section drawings to show, uh, really just showing the, the basement really and the height of the building. And again, uh, landscaping proposed. So um, full landscaping is proposed. We have some tree planting proposed in the front and also at the back. Um, you'll note within your report that um, a number of trees are to be removed. Um, in consultation with the tree officer, um, there is a tree here which was originally to be removed and has to be retained and is subject to tree preservation order. Um, so some 3D visuals submitted with the application to assist. This is from Wilberforce Way. So you can see, as I said, uh, sort of simplistic looking facing brick 
building. That's the design approach. Uh, there's the car parking there. And then from the front in the road um, here. So as I said, it, the, the main section of the building is the tallest is set in the middle. So it has that staggered look about it. Um, all other lots of tall uh, buildings in the surrounding area are very tall um, traditional buildings, which we can show in the site pictures. So the building itself, it was appears to, it was hit by a tree, I believe, with the damage um, some years ago, and it's been been like that for quite a long time. Um, but the site is is now secured with with construction fencing around it. Um, these are trees here proposed proposed to be removed to accommodate the proposal. Um, looking down the street, so this is a bit further south. So the sites here, as I said, in the street. There's a, there's a variety of, of dwellings and, and boundary treatments. Um, there are some taller walls, so proposal would provide a, a tall wall here. Opposite the site are grade two listed buildings, um, which are these two. And there's the neighboring one to the right. So as I said, in the surroundings are, are taller, sort of two and a half story traditional buildings. Um, Further down the street, the site's on the left. So you would have that the brick wall here and then the pavilion setting back as you go back in the site. Um, this other property here to the other side of Wilberforce Way, as I said, with a, a tall wall, um, more of a modern traditional ap approach there. That's the traditional property next door. Um, so overall, Chair, with this application, although contemporary in form, um, an opposite list of buildings. Officers are satisfied with the design approach as it is single story um, and would not compete with the uh, traditional buildings within within the street and can be accepted in, in the conservation area. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can you remove the drawing? Thank you very much. Louise, do we have um, any submissions, please? None for this application, Chair. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Macon. Um, the report talks about um, removal of CPZ because of the of a CPZ parking place in Wilberforce Way because of the entrance. Um, could you explain why the entrance is not in um, in Lawston Road? And the other question was um, the trees to be to be removed. Are they going to be replaced? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, um, with regards to the um, with regards to the trees, so. So the trees, um, the trees will, there is replacement tree planting proposed. Um, so a number of um, a number of trees are to be removed, including the one near the front of the site. Uh, let me just, so, Those. yeah, so um, looking through representation. So th these trees here, the tree officer is satisfied there's no um, they are not of great visual merit and actually quite dominating to that that section of Wilberforce Way. Um, there's no objections to the removal of those trees there. Um, this tree here is also proposed to be removed. That one is on on the right on the boundary edge of of the development site. Um, and through discussions with the tree officer, um, the tree officer is is happy with the removal of that tree. Um, but with retaining another tree at the back, which can be protected by tree preservation order. So the issue with the tree on the corner, trying to get a better picture, this tree here is with, with, with the scheme um, being a single story building, they, they are looking with the, with the solar panels to, to um, you know, maximize the solar gain on, on the site. Um, and so, that would 
assist in terms of removal of the tree. But with the with the scheme proposed, we are seeking tree planting. They are they are proposing tree planting, and the species are to be to be um, determined by a condition. The tree officer expressed some concern with the species proposed initially at the front here, um, but the design approach is for tree planting, and they have proposed that throughout, and that is to be protected by condition. So in order in order to assist in making sure the tree planting is is undertaken. Um, officers have, we did amend uh, condition 15 and normally we protect protect trees for a period of five years, but actually we've, we've um, made it 10 years for this scheme because we think actually the landscaping will be, is quite integral to the, to the sort of design approach to the scheme. So, so we have, we have sought to, to get tree planting, um, which is proposed and to be secured by, um, via conditions at the end there. Um, in regards to um, the CPZ, um, I'm not aware if, because uh, in, the, in the committee report, um, I mean, there's no objections to the to the to the the use of Wilberforce Way for for the two parking, um, but I'm struggling to see where where it's referred to the um, the CPZ. Is that in the in representation section? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it is, yes. I'll come. I'll come back, Linda. Can you carry on? Uh, any more questions? Any comments then, please? No, no comments on this? You'll have to come back then, Russell, because there are no comments. Oh yes, Peter Southgate. Um, yes, to overall comments, Chair? Yeah, are you, thank you. Are you. Taking overall comment now, Chair? Or? I am, yeah. yeah yes, thank you. Um, no, I do quite like this. I like the fact that given the site where it is, that it's not the sort of predictable McMansion maxing out on the space and size, but it, it's actually designed as a building which whoever's commissioned it clearly wants to live in with a, a, a careful um, thought about outside spaces as well as inside, how the light will move through the day. And, and, and I like that uh, that thoughtfulness. Um, I had to walk past the, uh, this afternoon while we're way back from the common, and it, it is quite unlike, or will be quite unlike, the very grand houses both facing it and alongside. But that that is not, you know, that is not a not a bad thing. At least there can't be any complaints that it uh, is overbearing in relationship to its neighbours. So I, I'm <laughs> be pleased to, to to support approval of this. Okay. Are there any other comments? Russell, yeah. Um, make in. It's in um, consultation 5.1. The the last bit of the sentence says, therefore off street parking for the development should be from Marston Road. Um, it's uh, presumably a comment from a resident. So is there a CPZ in that area or not? And if they're happy with it, then fine. Uh, I'm not aware if it's a, if it's a, if it's a CPZ in that area. Um, I mean, Wilberforce Way is a very it's a very quiet, small road. Um, where the majority of people do have have off street parking, um, so I think the balance is with a loss of a very small bit bit here which is just outside this person the, the application site rather than um affecting that someone bit. else's um property i think a balance has to be drawn here with a it, it might well lose a, a space here but it is one in a, in a row where lots of people have have off street parking um so that's that's the the, the view the the 
I mean, the scheme seeks to make best use of the of the front space here for for garden. Hence, we're just punching through with um, pedestrian access. So that's been the the design approach. Um, so we felt we couldn't object to that. No, for fine. Thank you. Would you mind we move? Thank you very much. Okay, so um, no more comments. Can we move to the recommendation, please? Can I see those in favour? Um, those against? And not voting. That would be Councillor G because he's uh, not in the meeting. Thank you. So the recommendations uh, is carried. Uh, we now move to agenda item eight, which is um, 87 Robinson Road, please. Chair, um, this application is brought to committee given the nature of objections. Um, the uh, proposals are for the erection uh, of a block of eight flats with one floor designed to be below ground level and two uh, above. The site is currently occupied by a detached dwelling, which the curse is circling there, um, and a store um, or garage um, building. Uh, the application site comprises a background plot on Robinson Road with an access way between 85 there and 89 uh, Robinson Road. Uh, members will see uh, that there's been recent planning history on the site of a scheme for a full three-storey block comprising nine flats being refused and subsequently dismissed on appeal. Um, the latest scheme, which I'll take you for some of the images. Oh yeah. The latest scheme, um, uh, by sinking one floor of accommodation uh, below ground level um, and during the course of negotiation on this application, simplifying the design of the roof um, has resulted in a significant reduction in the scale of the building as seen from neighbouring gardens and dwellings, which officers consider has addressed a key concern associated with the appealed scheme. Uh, creating basement level accommodation uh, created uh, new challenges in terms of uh, flood risk um, and discussion uh, with the designers brought forward uh, um, a uh, revised internal layout. Sorry, I'm going too far forward. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, the um, uh, discussions with the uh, designers brought forward um, a new internal layout, uh, avoiding some units being wholly subterranean, um, improving light and outlook and the quality of the environment by providing split level units. You'll see here there's a, a staircase within um, the, um, at the basement uh, level bits of accommodation, taking you up to um, these parts, the sleeping areas for um, uh, the units, whereas the initial scheme that was submitted had a number of front to back family sized units at um, uh, uh, basement level. Um, so the proposals have um, avoided some of the units being wholly subterranean, improving light and outlook and the quality of the environment. Um, a small part of the site is in an area at greater risk from flooding. And that's um, this, just this little corner um, over here. Um, and uh, notwithstanding the applicant's designs, which seek to address any potential for flooding, within the units by introducing uh, external retaining walls to enclose patios. So the retaining walls would be around here. Uh, the quality of accommodation is further improved by now removing sleeping accommodation at uh, ground level. The reduction in parking uh, provides um, more space for um, cycle parking um, and refuse. If I can take you to the A very tiny image there, I'm sorry. Um, uh, providing more space for cycle parking and refuse. Uh, the applicant has drafted an undertaking to make the scheme. Permit free. 
during the course of assessing this application associated with the appeal. Jonathan, we lost you for a moment there. We we did lose you for a moment there, so perhaps you could repeat that last little bit, please. Okay, the reduction of parking provides more space space within the principal part of the site, the cycle parking and refuse. So that's where the curse is moving um, uh, there. The applicant has drafted an undertaking to make the scheme permit free. Officers consider the scheme as amended overcomes both earlier concerns raised during the course of assessing this application and also those associated with the appeal. The scheme is recommended for approval subject to the permit free undertaking and conditions. Thank you. Thank you. you. Can you move the, thank you very much. Um, Louise, do we have any submissions please? Uh, Yes, Chair, I have a submission um, on behalf of one of the residents of Robinson Road. Thank you. I am speaking against the above application. My objections are noted as follows. A single narrow 2.8 metre wide driveway for access and egress is simply insufficient and I would argue unsafe. This takes into account the anticipation of vehicles accessing the site and factoring in visitors and many delivery vehicles. This access is substandard for a fire engine or other emergency vehicles to negotiate and it's suggested that the applicant needs to contact the the relevant fire authority and ambulance services to conduct a fire safety audit for the site, noted in a transport report from Sarath Atanyaki and point 5.8 of this agenda. I also have concerns for the able and disabled pedestrians of the eight flats, 29 residents, having to share this narrow access with any passing traffic. I strongly disagree that the proposed plans offer ample space for the five times 600 litre euro bins and a car to pass comfortably on collection day. Can I bring the following to your attention? The dimensions of the said bins via Merton Council website are 1,370 millimetres height times 1,260 millimetres wide times 730 millimetres deep. A standard car width, VW Golf, is 2,027 millimetres. The width of the shared driveway is 2,800 millimetres, Crosby Transport Planning Statement. This leaves a distance of 21.5 millimetres on each side to pass between the wall of 85 and the Euro bin. Turning into the shared driveway, you do so at an angle as you can't drive in perpendicular from the road. And when the bins are in position, it further restricts access. A challenge for an experienced driver to negotiate, and I would say implausible to do safely. I would like to know if this has been physically proved rather than just dimensions on the plans to see if a car slash emergency vehicle can indeed pass without obstruction. If not, then I propose this test is carried out and noted. It is scheduled that the waste management company will put these bins in the holding area and return them on collection day. However, they could be left out all day and only moved back where the waste company choose to do so. Potentially, these bins will not be positioned back neatly in their holding area after emptying. If not removed immediately, these will obstruct the shared driveway, causing further hindrance for garage access to the elderly occupants at 83 and all vehicles making the increased deliveries to the eight flats due to revoked on-site and permit parking. The latest plans have inadequate details of measurements, visual renders of the building or even updated reports on the new proposal. Some of the documents still say nine dwellings. Will these be updated? In conclusion, I'd be grateful if the council would take my objections into consideration, including access for construction vehicles when deciding this application. Thank you. And do we have a response to that? We do, Chair. Submitted in June 2019, the original scheme was initially supported by the case officer and recommended for approval in October 2019. However, following a dismissed appeal decision from a previously submitted scheme on the site, the council asked the applicant to relook at the proposal in terms of design, bulk, daylighting and flood risk. At this point, the applicant employed a new architect and after an initial meeting at the council offices with planning officer Peter Miles and flood officer Tom Sly on the 25th of November, 
and then a subsequent follow-up meeting at the council offices on the 2nd of December with the team leader Jonathan Lewis, a scheme was worked up between the architect and the planning officers that the council found acceptable and have now recommended for approval. The main alterations include the size, mass and bulk from the initial scheme has been reduced with the removal of the large pitched roof and the number of proposed units reduced from nine to eight. The internal configuration of the flats was also redesigned to the planning officer's approval so that the three bedroom family units at ground and basement level had greater levels of daylight and sunlight. The planning officers were happy with layout and sunlight daylight levels to all other flats and that all flats have had access to outside amenity space. Windows have been reduced in size on the front elevation facing Robinson Road, and all bedrooms are now at the front of the property, which will be used less regularly than the main day daytime activity rooms, kitchen, dining, reception, that look out over the railway tracks. The building has also been designed with a more contemporary feel with good, good brickwork detailed detailing incorporated into the design. The design was worked up with the planning officers through both meetings and the final design has been agreed and approved by the planning officers. For refuse collection, a section 106 legal agreement has been signed off with the local planning department that the management company of the building will employ subcontractors to put out and remove bins at the end of the driveway on collection day, common practice for this type of flatted development throughout London. A further Section 106 agreement has been signed off so that none of the flats will be provided parking permits, so parking on Robinson Road will not be impacted by the development. Three parking spaces have been provided in front of the property for the family units. 18 secure cycle parking spaces have also been provided. Located five minutes from Collier's Wood and Tooting Broadway Tube, the site is in a highly sustainable location. The building will also benefit from a higher fire hydrant installed, thus eliminating the need for fire appliance access to the building. The building will also have sprinkler systems installed. In the emerging, emerging London Plan Policy H1 states, boroughs should optimise the potential for housing delivery on all sites, whilst Policy H2 states, Councils should proactively support small site development to significantly increase the contribution that small sites make towards housing delivery. Councils should support small mid medium house builders. The, this current design has been evolved following close consultation with the planning department to ensure that all concerns on design, mass and daylighting were addressed. And in doing so, the scheme has been recommended for approval by the officers. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, do you want to comment on uh, the access? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, sorry, if I can just say, if I can uh, draw members' attention on, on the matter of um, fire safety, um, you'll see condition 15 um, on page 156. Um, so we're saying no dwelling should be occupied until the applicant has provided, sorry, says application, should, should read applicant, until the applicant has provided written confirmation as to the installation of a fire hydrant or otherwise agreed fire management and safety plan, and that such measures have been agreed by the London Fire Brigade. Um, this condition is, is, is very similar to one which we used um, on a backland development for some um, bungalows on, um, I think it was Leefield Road at the, um, March meeting of the planning applications uh, committee. So we acknowledge that it's an issue that needs to have a technical solution, uh, but we um, consider that um, providing a solution is feasible and the condition drives the applicant towards um, uh, that outcome. Um, in terms of um, management concerns for um, refuse, yes, the, the applicant's right. Um, we have raised this as a, as a concern, um, but um, the um, uh, uh, transport officer um, has also um, looked at the scheme. Um, and uh, for, for the moment, um, we're, we're content to, um, uh, to work with the applicant um, on the basis that um, uh, they will have a management uh, arrangement 
um, in place. Um, it, it's a particularly long uh, driveway um, in this instance. Um, uh, no matter how much we change the, um, uh, the design of the scheme, that driveway is going to remain um, the same length. Um, so working on the basis that we can't alter the dimensions or the length uh, of the driveway, it's really striking a balance in terms of what we consider to be the appropriate amount of development which um, can be um, facilitated on the site. So it may seem strange that we've reduced the amount of car parking within the development, but given it's in a CPZ, we can impose a permit-free section 106. And by doing that, we can then um, limit the number of parking spaces on the site. And in this case, we've only got three. So when there's a reference to traffic um, along the access uh, road, we are realistically looking at, um, you know, the movements of three vehicles in and out uh, of uh, the site. And having revisited um, the site uh, this afternoon, if someone was making a, a, a delivery and that um, access track was properly resurfaced, um, in, in, ter in terms of, uh, of deliveries, it, it would be a, a moment to stride um, uh, along that pathway and, and, and make um, uh, the delivery when we wouldn't normally um, try and provide space for a delivery van um, on all um, housing uh, developments and I, I don't think that should necessarily be the case here. Thank you. Uh, questions please. Councillor Lunning. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a question about the standard of accommodation for the properties at basement level. I just wondered whether officers could provide a bit more detail on daylight and sunlight in each of the rooms, also where the windows are positioned, particularly the middle property, which I'm guessing can't be dual aspect due to the sort of constraints of the site. Thank you. Yes, the, um, the scheme that was um, submitted uh, initially as part of this application um, had, um, if I can just go back to the, um, the, plan, the floor plans. Uh, the, the plans as originally submitted um, had units with both um, uh, living rooms and bedrooms at base level. So some of the basement windows um, had a very poor um, uh, um, uh, light penetration because they were pretty much in this, this hatched area um, here, which has now been um, uh, removed. So what we've, what we've now got um, are rooms, and you can, you can see here, what they've done is that they've, they've introduced windows to the back um, of the living uh, space. Um, and we've also got generous windows um, looking out into um, the, um, uh, the patio uh, areas. So we have got, you know, if you, if you, look, if you look then at the cross section um, of uh, the site, whoops, sorry. You, ha you, you have got um, uh, windows which are about um, here. And okay, you know, they will be they will be looking up and over that retaining uh, wall. Now, uh, again, it may not be ideal, but this was the approach that planners took um, uh, here. What we'd said was that we had no issue with providing accommodation on three floors, but probably a, a much more um, pleasant uh, arrangement for future occupants would be if rather than having um, a family-sized unit running front to back, but all at, at lower ground level. If you had part of the accommodation at lower ground level, and then you had the bedrooms, again, with a much better and lighter um, outlook. So you've, you've got windows effectively all at, at, at ground um, level here, with, so with perfectly good um, light penetration. The overall environment of, of these units would be that much more pleasant. I mean, you're right. 
the unit in the middle isn't dual aspect, but if you're going to um, develop a, a site of this size, I mean, we're looking at we're looking at eight um, units. It, it becomes increasingly challenging to, to make a, a meaningful development with a nice centrally placed door, a balanced um, elevation at the front, dual aspect units on each corner, split level units on each corner. I say inevitably, unless we were to to look at what I would suggest would be oversized units, one of the units is going to end up being um, single aspect. Thank you. Can you remove the joinings, please? I'm sorry. Okay. Questions, any other questions? No. Comments, please. Councillor Ward. Thank you. Um, obviously, this is in Corey's words. I have the pleasure of representing. Um, the, the, on the access way, it obviously is between numbers 85 and 89, the existing boundary walls of those properties. There is no way of widening or shortening the access way. It is what it is. And I think considering the space um, available behind that, and not wanting to build too high and they're over, therefore overlooking the back gardens of those properties and others nearby. Um, I, I actually want to congratulate our planning officers and the developers for coming up with a scheme that fits into that, provides eight housing units in an area of um, high demand for housing in a way that um, minimises the impact on local residents. And I, um, I wouldn't say perfectly happy, I always say at least because nothing is ever perfect, but I am happy that this is a good development and will add to the housing stock in Collingswood and not um, be too much, if at all, to the detriment of immediate neighbours, at least after the construction phase, which obviously isn't a planning consideration. So overall, I think, um, well, certainly I will vote for it. I know other members to do so too. It'll be a welcome addition to our community here in Collegewood. Thank you. Any other comments? No. In that case, then I'm going to move to the vote. Can we agree the recommendation, please? Those show, show of hands. Uh, those against, please. Um, the recommendation is carried. Thank you. Uh, we now move on to agenda item nine, which is to note, and that's planning appeal decisions. Um, two dismissed and one allowed. That's just for noting. And also uh, to agenda item 10, which is a planning enforcement uh, report again, which is to note. And should you have any issues around enforcement, please would you take those up separately with officers um, for uh, issues affecting your particular ward? Um, can I thank everybody tonight? It's our first um, webinar for um, uh, planning um, and look forward to seeing you at the next planning meeting. Thank you.